Welcome to LPA Threatened and Endangered Species Online Training. To receive federal funding for each of your projects, you are required to address impacts to federal and state protected species and habitats. Federal Highway Administration maintains documentation on your projects. Only MoDOT is authorized to officially consult with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service under the Endangered Species Act. However, it is the responsibility of the project sponsor to provide MoDOT with all project information necessary to complete the consultation process. The purpose of this training is to guide you through the necessary steps to obtain threatened and endangered clearance for your project. One of the processes that may be new to you is obtaining natural resources information online. Once you have a good idea of the project limits, you will need to access websites of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service for federally listed species and the Missouri Department of Conservation for state monitored species to begin addressing your project's potential impacts. First, we're going to show you how to obtain an official species list from the United States Fish and Wildlife Service's Information for Planning and Conservation Online Web Tool, or IPAC for short. The information you will need for this step includes the project location, limits, and description. We will use this to enter details into IPAC to generate an official species list for your project. When you enter project location details, IPAC will generate a trust resource report. However, this is not the document that MoDOT needs. The official species list will be on U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service letterhead with a consultation code and date. This code is needed for any future correspondence about your project. I will show you step by step how to do this. To obtain your official species list, you will navigate to this website for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service IPAC web tool. This is the address https ecos.fws.gov slash IPAC. Let's get started. You will enter your project location on a map. IPAC will bring up a map of the United States and you can refine that location to an area near your project. You can zoom in further to obtain more detail and outline your project defined either with a line for road projects or a polygon to describe an area. It's okay to include more area around your project than less. If you have any project changes in the future, it should all be covered in the area you've described in this step. Click Continue. IPAC will generate a resource list. But remember, the step that you want to get to is the official species list. So we'll move down to this tab and select Request Official Species List. In this form, you'll need to fill in detailed project information. This project is in Ray County, and the project identification number is BRO B089-26-1. You'll want to describe your project in great detail. This includes any riprap that you'll be placing in a stream, any Extra work that will be done, including guardrail repair, embankment repair, any channelization of the stream, and if you will have tree clearing, please include this information here. For all transportation, local public agency programs, the classification of your project is transportation. The lead agency for your project is the Federal Funding Authority. You will select Federal Agency, Department of Transportation, and Federal Highway Administration. Since you are not an employee of this federal agency, you will want to uncheck the box, same as lead agency. Select the correct line from the drop-down list, either other government agency or consultant, and enter your identification. The contact information will be used if there are any questions this is where you'll put in your personal information, including your name, the address, and telephone number. But in requesting the official species list, for MoDOT purposes, we have set up an inbox to receive all correspondence from this website. 
please enter IPAC at modot.mo.gov. I will show you in a moment how you can obtain a copy sent either to your own email address or a secondary email address or obtain the link to get back to the resource page. Selecting this inbox as the email address will generate the report directly to MoDOT and if any updates are ever needed we can easily obtain them in-house. The next screen that comes up will show that you have submitted the official species list. It's a two-step process and this MoDOT email should receive verification immediately with a link to get to the PDF version of the official species list. Since you didn't enter your own email address there are options to make sure that you get a copy of the official species list. If you choose the Save button, you can enter your own email address or a secondary email address to receive a copy for the edited project link. Email has been sent. If you select Share, what will come up is a link to this exact page. You may copy this link put it into your own web browser to get back to this point at any time. It may take a couple hours to one day to generate the official species list in PDF form. However, to get started immediately, you can go back to the resources list. This is the exact list, although it will look different when it comes on the official species list on Fish and Wildlife Service letterhead. But you can get started with determining which species could be in your project area, the habitat needs for each species, habitat characteristics in your project area, and the assessments of impacts to listed species. For state listed species, you will need to visit the Missouri Department of Conservation's website. You will receive a Natural Heritage Review Report, which you will need to provide to MoDOT for review. Note that the Heritage Review Report that you receive is not your clearance letter. Both your IPAC and Natural Heritage Reports will be included best management practices that should be incorporated into your project. In addition to obtaining your reports from the Fish and Wildlife Service and the Department of Conservation, you will need to plan your field work using your plan sheets and other resources. This will also help you assess project impact. A couple of great tools available at no cost are Google Earth and Google Maps for aerial photography. This will allow you to evaluate tree cover, vegetation, and aquatic features such as streams, wetlands, and floodplains. The wetlands and floodplain layers are not standard features in Google Earth, but can be obtained from the websites of natural resource agencies. You may want to take some time to search for layers that will help you in your assessments. This is the website address that you will need to navigate to in order to access the Missouri Natural Heritage Review. If you haven't already done so, create a new, new account. If you have an account already, go ahead and enter in your username and password. Once you've logged in, click on the Map tab. You will then zoom in to your project area, select Create Project. It will then pull up a Draw and Edit tool you can select the type of tool that you would like to use from the drop down menu on the left. In this instance we are going to select draw, draw polygon to create a polygon around our project area. Click on the map to start drawing. Make sure that you include your entire project area within your polygon. Double click to stop drawing and then hit accept and it will pull up a project information window. This window asks you to in enter in some information about your project for review. Enter in a project title, enter in a project number, and then it asks you for a, a project type. Select transportation, structures and bridges, bridge replacement and or removal on existing alignment, and span bridge. Enter in a brief project description, including the name of the water body, the county, uh, and any other pertinent information. Make sure you include enough information that your project description is, is conveyed, but you don't have to write a lengthy description. 
Your contact information should already be pre-filled in. Scroll down and select your project edit status, either draft or final. If you select your draft, you could come back and revisit the project and make changes. If you select final, it will submit your project to MDC for your final review. In this case, we're going to select draft in case we want to add more information later. If you have additional information to upload for the review process, such as project plans, photographs, maps, etc., you can select those files from this page and upload them. In this case, we don't have any additional files to upload, so we're going to go ahead and click Submit. This will save your project, and you should get an acknowledgment. If this had been the final project for review, you would receive a review from the Missouri Department of Conservation in your email box. You will print out that report, include that with, to MoDOT for final review. Gathering additional background information on species listed before conducting a site visit will expedite the habitat assessment and review process. For each species listed in the Endangered Species and Critical Habitat sections of your IPAC review, you will be responsible for stating if negative impacts are expected to occur as a result of the project. This means you have to acknowledge that habitat suitable for each of those species either does or does not occur in the project impact area. This is where gathering information for a site visit will be very useful. A very simple step to take is to do an online search of that species. For example, if you type in Neosho Mucket, Arkansas Darter, Running Buffalo Clover, etc. in the state of Missouri, you will get several links to information about those species. The habitat characteristics can usually be summarized into one or two brief statements to direct your search for suitable habitat in the field. Here's a tip. If you go to the Missouri Department of Conservation website, all of the federally listed species should have at least a short summary all in one location. If searching the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service resources online, something called a species fact sheet will have the most concise summary for habitat information. Do this for all the species and critical habitat listed for your project. We don't expect you to know where exact resources such as mussel beds, bat caves, plant locations, etc. are located. But if you can make reasonable statements that show you at least have an idea of what habitat characteristics to look for, your evaluation of impacts to each listed species will be much more meaningful. This will shorten the review process dramatically. Later in document submittal, you'll need to include your assessment for each species in regards to your project details. Now that you have completed your desktop review, let's talk about what you'll need to do to complete field work. The most common issue you will evaluate is the clearing of trees and any impact that may have on protected bat species. The next most common issue concerns migratory birds and bridge projects. Whereas threatened and endangered bats and their habitats are protected by the Endangered Species Act, Migratory birds that may be nesting on a bridge are protected under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. In Missouri, there are three federally listed species of bats, gray bat, Indiana bat, and northern long-eared bats. All of these species hibernate in caves in the winter. Gray bats also form large colonies for maternity season to raise young in summer caves. Indiana and northern long-eared bats, however, utilize forested habitat during the spring, summer, and fall. When evaluating impacts to trees that will be removed for your project that could be used by protected bat species, you'll want to keep in mind your entire project limits. This includes any disturbance area, staging area, easements, utility relocation, and storage areas. For aquatic species, you would also consider downstream locations from all bridges. Indiana and northern long air bats utilize trees with the following characteristics. Live trees with sloughing or peeling, slab-like bark. This would not include sycamores or birches, but rather shagbark hickory, white oak, large maples and locust trees, basically something that a bat could shelter under the peeling bark. They could also use standing dead trees or snags 
with slabs of bark falling away. Bark that is separating from the wood on damaged or dying trees could provide shelter habitat. Also, trees with cavities or holes in the trunk or junction of the limbs. And also included in potential habitat are trees with deep splits in the bark or scars or knot holes with deep pockets. The Federal Highway Administration has a programmatic consultation agreement with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for Indiana and northern Longyear bat habitat impacts. If you can commit to tree clearing for suitable trees only between November 1 and March 31, and you will not be clearing suitable habitat more than 100 feet from the existing road for any aspect of your project, then it likely qualifies under this programmatic agreement. What this means is faster consultation. You will need to emphasize the commitment to these conditions when you submit documentation to MoDOT for environmental review. The Migratory Bird Treaty Act is a 100-year-old law that is intended to protect common bird species and prevent them from declining and becoming extinct. The law was enacted after several very common species, for example, the passenger pigeon, became extinct due to overhunting and overcollection. To evaluate impacts to migratory birds associated with your bridge projects, you'll check areas of the bridge where birds could be nesting. Check pier caps and tops of piers, overhanging edges, between girders, and also check trusses and the substructure of the bridge. Bird species that commonly nest on bridges include cliff swallows, barn swallows, American robins, and eastern phoebes. Cliff swallows make their mud nests in large colonies. Sometimes hundreds can be found on large bridges, but smaller bridges could contain only three or four nests. Barn swallows nest in smaller groups, and robins and phoebes are solitary. Their nests could be found anywhere on the substructure. Make sure to take photos of any nests you observe. Note where the nests occur on the bridge and whether the project will impact the nests. The Migratory Bird Treaty Act prevents the removal of active nests, in other words, those with eggs or young in them, but not the removal of inactive nests. If you know your bridge has nests, you can schedule work outside the breeding season or initiate an aggressive removal program prior to the nesting season. MoDOT will work with you to find ways to avoid violating the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, including providing you with job special provisions that we use on our STIP projects. Bridges can also serve as roosts for bat species, including endangered species. Make sure you look in cracks and crevices under the bridge, including expansion joints and abutments for signs of roosting bats. These can include unusual oily stains on the bottom of the bridge or the bat droppings below the bridge. If bats are noted, MoDOT will work with you to determine the best ways to avoid impacting these species. This concludes our Threatened and Endangered Species training for LPA applicants and consultants. Information provided in this video will help you prepare your summary to, of documents to submit to MoDOT. You have learned how to obtain your official species list and consultation code from IPAC, conduct a natural heritage review from MDC, take photographs of trees to be removed clearly showing habitat characteristics, to incorporate a description of tree sizes, clearing amount, distance from the road, and time of year for tree removal. Shoot photographs under bridges that show birds' nests or signs of bat roosting. Present findings from your field visits which should include a short description of habitat requirements per species and whether your project will impact suitable habitat.